Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Chris Harvey and I'm a landscape photographer based in North Wales. Today is day one of my new photography project, photographing the Clwydian Range in North East Wales. I'm heading up a hill called Bryn Allen and I was actually here less than 24 hours ago to scout out the location. I took a couple of photos which I'll put on screen now. The conditions were amazing but hugely challenging because of the driving rain and hail. It's an area of interest for me because it feels very different to other landscapes in this area. There are some limestone pavements that I want to explore, some lone trees, and these are two features of the landscape that are hard to find in many areas of this region. So come along with me on this little photo mission and let's see if we can improve on yesterday's photos. So apologies for any wind noise that you might hear in this clip. It's the reason why most of this video has been a voiceover, but I just wanted to talk briefly about this composition because this is exactly what I was hoping to find. It's the reason that I've come here. It's because of these limestone pavements that you can only really find in this one area of the Cloidian Range. It's very much kind of the antithesis of the rest of the landscape around here, which is just very green, very verdant, very undulating. It's just kind of quintessential British countryside. Um, but the limestone pavements aren't enough by themselves, but you can see behind me there's a lone tree that I think will make for a good subject. Um, the light is coming and going. We might not really get any light and the wind is making this so challenging, but it's great to be out. This isn't going to be the only time that I come here, so I'm not necessarily too worried about getting it right today, but it's a good scouting opportunity at least. Um, the one challenging thing about this composition is going to be the tree because I ideally would like to get the tree separated from the undulation of the hill so it kind of stands alone in the negative space of the sky. But I might not be able to necessarily get the sort of foreground how I want it and the tree how I want it. There might have to be a sacrifice and um, well, I think the foreground is probably the most important thing um, just because that's the thing that is most indicative of the landscape and that's the thing that for this project I want to focus on for this one shot. That's an important thing about a project or a body of work is that sometimes you've got to be a little bit more I guess selective about the things that you focus on. It might not necessarily be the thing that makes for the greatest photo but it could well be the thing that tells the strongest story or depicts the landscape in the most accurate way because um, there'll be other photos in this portfolio in this project that are you know those kind of quintessential landscape shots but sometimes just having a few photos that can break things up and just show some of the details a little bit closer I think they're always worth having so let's see what we can get framed up um, and I'll put the image on screen and sorry again for the wind noise and the fact that I'm covered in snot. So I've got a couple of variations of this composition to show you. This one in portrait orientation and I'll show you a landscape version as well. But what I enjoyed about the portrait version is the real exaggeration that you get in the foreground. So this shot is basically 50% foreground because that is definitely the feature within the landscape that I wanted to highlight. And I liked how the limestone pavements, how the cracks between the stones acted as a kind of leading line pointing towards the lone tree. Now, as I mentioned in the clip just prior to this, there was the struggle of getting the separation between the tree and the sort of hill and the sky. You can see that the kind of bottom of the tree is still within the kind of undulation of the hill. I couldn't get low enough to really get that separation to get the tree in the negative space of the sky. But I, I don't mind it too much because it's a sacrifice and a compromise that I just had to make. If I got down even lower, you wouldn't really get the full, um, I guess, geometry of the foreground. You wouldn't get those lines that are so long pointing up to the tree. Everything would be compressed and 
a bit shallower, which I don't think works as well. Um, I also really enjoyed the sky in this image. Um, there was some nice light starting to poke through and those stormy clouds just added some nice atmosphere. If we move on to the landscape orientation shot, again, I do enjoy this one, but the light wasn't as nice for this particular version. But I do, again, like where the limestone pavement is positioned in this shot. Again, it's taking up about 50% of the frame. It's a bit different because you don't get the strong leading lines pointing towards the tree like you did in the portrait shot. But in this one, you can see a little bit more of the landscape in the distance with the kind of rolling green hills, which are another aspect of the landscape of the Cluidian range, which is just very quintessential. And I think it acts as a bit of a juxtaposition because you have the rolling undulation of the green hills and the more rugged and textured landscape of the limestone pavements. So let me know which shot you prefer. Do you prefer the landscape or the portrait? I think the landscape one has potential, but the light needs to be different. Um, and I like the composition of the vertical orientation because I like those leading lines. But let me know in the comments below which you prefer. Oh, today has been so challenging. I just really wasn't expecting the wind to be as kind of brutal as it was, but I still think, especially when you're undertaking a project like I'm doing, when you just want to get started and you just want to get the ball rolling, it's important to just come out and get those juices flowing. It's such a great landscape around here. It's so, it's so beautiful. And um, come rain or shine, it's definitely worth being here. And it's somewhere that I'm going to keep revisiting, as I mentioned. Um, and I'm just glad to be out. I'm glad to bring you guys along. And I definitely think it was worthwhile, even if the images that I'm shared are sharing are only really kind of scouting images at the moment. I just think, um, yeah, I think there's so much potential and I'm looking forward to exploring that potential more over spring and summer when, um, yeah, hopefully the weather will be a bit better. I'm so cold. I'm so congested. I could do with, uh, I could do with some coffee, really. Should have brought some with me. That was a rookie mistake. I have brought an apple though, but I don't feel like that's really gonna quite hit the spot. Um, something to warm the hands and warm the spirits is, is definitely what's needed. So um, yeah, let's continue the walk. Let's get down, try and get a bit more sheltered. But yeah, wow, what a landscape. I hope you've been enjoyed. Hope you're enjoying the video. I'm so windswept, I can't even think anymore. So guys, I bailed. The weather was just too brutal, I was too cold, so I've come home, had a coffee, changed into some dry clothes, and I'm feeling much better. So I hope you enjoyed coming along on this little photography outing. I just want to wrap up this video by talking a little bit about this project and provide a little bit of advice and maybe a tip or two um, for you guys when it comes to photography. And I think when you're undertaking a project-based approach, as I mentioned in last week's video, which I'll link down below, I think when days like today happen where the weather is terrible and you're feeling particularly downtrodden because everything is wet, everything is cold, and you haven't really gotten the photos or the results that you were hoping for, I think a project-based approach can help with that mindset because, like I mentioned, I'm going to be revisiting this place time and time again. I'm going to give myself ample opportunities to get the shot in the conditions that I'm hoping for. And, you know, by doing that, by revisiting, I'm getting to know the location better. I'm getting out into my local area and I'm documenting it and I'm kind of curating a, a little bit of a journal, I suppose, um, that I can look back on. That's what these videos are sort of acting as. It's a bit of a field notes, it's a bit of a journal of being in the field and seeing how conditions changed and what, you know, what it provided on that that given day. Um, and that's just something that I think is beneficial for all landscape photographers or any photographers is that persistence, perseverance and patience, I suppose, the three P's of landscape photography. Um, it's important to be persistent, to be persistent. It's important to go back to these places you know, revisit locations and take the pressure off. You don't need to get the shot on your first visit. Now, granted, that's more difficult if you're traveling 
long distances, going on a trip or, you know, going abroad. But I think especially if you're doing stuff locally, just take the pressure off. Just get out and enjoy it. Anyway, I will leave it there. I'm still cold, so I'm going to go and warm up. But thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come along for the next outing, wherever that may be. Thank you for your support, and I will see you all next week.